Mm -hmm. Hi guys, um, Debbie, John, Kim here with Birds Out Loud. We are have a segment called Sitting with Birds. Um, it should actually be sitting with people who are sitting with birds who are sitting with people who are sitting with birds. <laughs> We brought John down here to talk about a couple of things with his bird, Indy. Uh, Indy is a blue, well, I'll just let you tell, tell us about Indy. Okay, Indy is... Why did Indy Indy? Um, it is flower sister, mm -hmm. and indigo is a type of flower. Got it. So I wanted to keep her name in the I'm flower sure family. I'm do that. Yeah. Okay. We had five, name, five flower names to pick from. Uh, there was lotus, uh, iris, um... Oh, there was a bunch of, we had five of them, yeah, and so we came, we all agreed in the house that we liked Indy, so it, and at the time we didn't know if Indy was a boy or a girl, mm -hmm. so we thought Indy would be a great, uh, you neutral know, gender. neutral, yep. <laughs> so. Okay, and how old is Indy now? Indy just turned 10 months, and uh, yeah, she's become the queen of the house, princess of the house, the queen's over there. Over there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got real wide when you said that. And um, so what I wanted to know from you was, um, so you came into the store to get Indian. I don't remember quite at the beginning, but what was your reasoning behind wanting to get not only a bird, but a macaw? Um, well, first, I've always had dogs. And all of my dogs have always been off leash. They've mm -hmm. trained to never leave my side. And I had one special dog that I knew I was gonna lose and I could never get another dog because I would always compare that one to, um, you know, her name was Missy. And so when I was thinking about a bird because I've always wanted an African Grey, and like most people. yeah <laughs> and so i started doing my research and i'm a very scratch the head you know very loving um and i've always heard african grays are more stimulated by intellectual than touch um and macaws were more loving more of a jokester more you know uh just Hands part of the on. yeah and so the time that I would spend with my dog, I could spend with the bird. Mm -hmm. And I can take her to Home Depot like I did the dog. Mm -hmm. I can take her, you know, out and train her to free flight like I would hike with my dog. Okay. And so, so you were thinking free flight from the beginning? Yes. Okay. I yeah. didn't know that. Yeah. Okay. And so when I went in, um, and obviously there, you know, there wasn't an African gray and I pretty much made my decision that we weren't going to get an African gray. She was there. Mm -hmm. And, uh, how old was she when you first saw her? Four weeks. Four weeks. Yeah. She didn't have feathers. And so it was, it, it was just the perfect time. It was like the perfect storm. It was a baby, just like I would get my puppies, mm -hmm. um, you know, and we could work from that first day going forward. But you didn't get her at four weeks. Uh, I didn't take her home at four weeks. She was at home. the store. Yeah. But I went into the store an hour to two so hours. So you put you put money down on a four week old baby. Mm -hmm. And at that time was probably too young to stay in the store, so Nancy's probably taking it back and forth. Yes. Right? Okay. So you would come in when she was there, visit visit the baby. Yep. How did you, so just back up a second, how did you know that you wanted to get into free flying? Because, I mean, it's relatively a new thing as we sit here right now. 10 months ago was even newer. So how did you even know that that was even going on? Um, I'm, I'm really, whenever I go to do something, I know that I want to do it um, because I've done my research. I've done my reading. Okay. Um, I've seen other people free fly. The training that went went into it, the good, the bad, mm -hmm. the ugly, um, and was I prepared for it? Okay. And so when it came down to it, I knew I was, and so it was, it was time to just move okay. forward and go on. 
you have any questions? Uh, no. Okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so you knew you wanted to get into free flying. You pretty much knew that you had wanted to get him a car. You knew that you needed to get it young. So you have it at that point. So take me from that, from there. From there, um, every day I, I went in, even when she couldn't fly or walk, mm -hmm. we spent time together at a bond. Mm -hmm. um, spent an hour, two hours a day. Uh, Nancy was in the store five days a week, so I was in the store five days a week. Um, it, it was, you know, 27 miles one way, but this is my lifetime bird. Mm -hmm. This is, you know, my, my companion. Uh, we're going to do everything together, so the time was really nothing. Mm -hmm. So we would start just walking around and, you know, rubbing her head, letting her know that, you know, it's me bringing her treats, even, um, you know, blueberries, just squirting the fluid in her mouth a little bit so that she knew that, you know, I was going to be feeding her and, right. and building that right. bond. Why didn't you want to kind of feed her yourself? Um, one, I didn't, I didn't know it was an option. Okay. Um, two, she was going to be free flying and I really wanted her to be around other birds, especially since I knew Nancy's bird flew. Mm -hmm. your, your, so I wanted them to have a relationship with those okay. other birds. Yeah, smart. Okay, so how did you start that whole, so the recall thing is important, right? Mm -hmm. So how did you start at that young? For somebody who is thinking about free flying, somebody who is thinking about getting a baby bird, somebody who's thinking about, um, having that lifestyle what do you suggest one of the very first steps that they do very first step um very first step i would say the relationship and and starting the recall training before she had she could fly she could walk and so when she was walking i'd put her 10 feet away put treats on the floor all different types and then have her walk and when she picked the treat that she wanted, I knew that was it. That was her, you know, honey hole. I could give that to her whenever she wanted. Mm -hmm. And I would give her love and praise. And I always wanted me to be a safe zone. So even if there was something wrong, she could come to me. Okay. And she knew she was safe. And she knew she would get that treat. And so that's where I started. And then the first time she took off was like, okay. Now it's on. Took off. What do you mean? When she flew, the first okay. time she flew, I knew it was on because okay. now we're going to start putting on perches and start at a close distance. And when she gets to me, it's you know, uh, it's big hugs, big love, and you know. What you were... age? What age was she at that time? When she first fledged, right? Mm -hmm. She's still being hand fed. Mm -hmm. What does fledge mean? So the first time that they go and take off. Yes. They're fledging. She was two and a half to three months. Okay. I don't remember the exact mm -hmm. date. I just remember we were on the floor and she over my head. And I'm like, okay, now I know it's on. And she was yeah. still at the store. She was still at the store. Mm -hmm. um, we would go in every day and we'd set up the perch over by the cockatiels, over by the toys. And we just slowly kept moving. Till we were at the bird room and she was flying directly from and one end to the other. Like sixty feet. I was just gonna say sixty feet. Yeah. Um, the other thing is, once she was in the air, that's great, but the distractions. Mm -hmm. We've, you know, when I train, it's no different between a bird, a dog, no matter what. There are going to be distractions. Mm -hmm. There's going to be loud noises. There's going to be kids. There's going to be other dogs. Well. A dog. Mm -hmm. There's going to be other birds. So other people. Other people. There are going to be obstacles. Mm -hmm. There's going to be time where we lose sight from each other. Mm -hmm. um, so these are all the things that I worked on. We would actually play hide and go seek in the store. I'd put her on her perch and I'd run away, and then I'd call her and be hiding behind, a, you know, a little post or something. Mm -hmm. So she had to find me. Mm -hmm. Because I, we're never going to be eye to eye. She's never going to be looking at me all the time. Right. So I need to make sure she can find my voice. Perfect. Perfect.
I mean, you make it sound so amazing and easy. So everyone that's watching this right now is like, let's go. Let's get them a cot. We're doing this today. But it's not all sunshine and rainbows. Are there, what, where were there points when you were like, am I doing any of this right? Like what? <laughs> Oh, there she's were forgotten days. everything she's learning. What is happening? <laughs> there were days I would put her on the perch and I would call her and it would be, and she'd just fly past me. Mm -hmm. um, and, and that was very scary for me because, you know, I take her outside. What if she does that? And so we started working on if she does fly past me, where does she land? And building that or she's not in trouble. That is probably the hardest thing I had to learn mm. between birds and dogs. Mm. Birds cannot be in trouble. They have to have a safe place. They have to have a flock that they can fly to and, and be within it yeah, and be comfortable. So the first time she flew off for me, it was like, oh my God, what do I do? And there's where the bird store came in because that part I didn't learn. And it was either you or Nancy said, nope, she's got to fly back to you. So I would wait her out. Mm, and sometimes... That's hard. That is really hard because human time and bird time are two different planes. <laughs> <laughs> they don't run on our clock. Oh, no, no. And sometimes it just seemed like a very long time. And every once in a while now, she'll get... Um, she'll be tired of flying. I'll throw her up in the air and it's always... And, and anybody that's into free flying knows you throw them up. They really don't want to fly. So they go land somewhere. Mm -hmm. And then you have to wait them out mm -hmm. and wait for them to come to you. And when they do come to you, it's not a punishment. It's a great thing they came to mm -hmm. you. They get the love and they get the, you know, the treat because they came to you. And so, huh. Yeah. Right. So then okay so we're working because I, I do remember you being in the store and i was like oh my god i'm so sorry that you travel so far you're giving up your saturday to come down here spend some time with her work with her tr start training her and you sat there for an hour going come on in come on in <laughs> yes <laughs> she just was like, come here come on She's like, nah. you can do it <laughs> and you know but that was part of the relationship you know we did a lot of this too there was a lot of her preening my ear. There was a lot of time of bringing in different treats, blueberries, strawberries, apples, uh, melons, just something new, something exciting. We would play games. Sometimes we would just walk around. Mm -hmm. um, and the, the assistance that I got from the bird store, from the free flight community mm -hmm. was second to none. Because it was no question that was that was dumb. It was it was just really a, a great experience, and I think that's helped us in you know in our free flying. Sure. And her and I have built, you know, I think the hardest thing for me in the relationship was the trust she had for me, but the trust I had for her. Absolutely. You know, Absolutely. It, it has to be both ways. Correct. I completely agree. So you're at the store. I remember at one point, I mean, she was getting really close to going home. Like mm -hmm. she was getting really close to weaning, and you, we started taking her out before mm -hmm. she we started taking her outside before she was even like even thought about even take you know yep. having her fly to you. Um, wasn't even done weaning yet, but we were trying to flatten that button by yeah. taking her outside because we don't want the first time to be free flying and take her outside because like it's all mm -hmm. new and and you know we got a harness for her and i would take her out and just walk her around the store i'd walk her you know close to the street i would walk her around other people um you know i'd walk her behind the store so she could hear the other birds screaming uh walked her by trees just gave her as a a lot of stimulus that she's going to see outside of the mm -hmm. bird store so that the first time she sees it she's not like oh my god what's that I, what's that oh my god <laughs> you hear that macaw yell and she, you know she's all flying off yeah yeah okay so where did you go to 
where was the first place that you really like your level one? Mm -hmm. Where where was that at, and how'd that go? That was out at Mesa Field, the field out at Pecos and Ellsworth, um, and you know it was her time was the perfect time because it was right as she was getting weaned, it, the temperatures had cooled down, so that's actually a sorghum field, so they had plowed the sorghum. Um, we. So she's like. Yeah. Six months old now. Yeah, she's about six months. Yeah, right around there. So we were able to go out and see the other birds fly. And she, I don't know if, if it's something that she would realize or, or how it would work, but she could see what the other birds are doing and how they're doing it. Um, you know, there were older birds, experienced birds, baby birds. Mm -hmm. There was just, there was a lot of people, a lot of distractions, mm -hmm. and she could see everything that was going on. And we went out there for about a month. And then one day you showed up and she took off towards you and she had her harness on and I sort of pulled her back. Mm -hmm. And then Nancy came up and she tried to fly to Nancy okay. and came back. And then Gypsy took off in the sky and she was on a perch. And Gypsy is. And Gypsy is Nancy's bird. Right. And she was on a perch and I was sort of standing in front of it. She's back here and she took off and she had her harness, she had her leash. And there was a split second, do I drop the leash or do I yank her out of the air? And I was afraid of ruining her confidence by yanking her out of the air. And I knew there were no trees around. There was nothing she could get snagged on. Mm -hmm. So I let it go. Mm -hmm. And my heart stopped. <laughs> and she took off. And the smile on her face while she was flying made it all worth it. Mm. <laughs> It did. But, you know, and I, I tell people ask me, you free fly your birds. Don't you, why don't you clip them? I don't cut my dog's legs off. Why would I stop my dog from running? You know, it's, it's through that companionship, that working. Mm -hmm. There's going to be a day where she is going to get lost and we're going to find her. I, mm -hmm. you know, um, there's going to be a day where she goes up in a tree and doesn't want to come down for a few hours. Mm -hmm. It's going to happen. But is it worth the bond that we have together? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. To uh, fast forward to today, mm -hmm. and what did you do today? Today, we actually hooked a GoPro up to her harness. And that was the goal of keeping the, the harness on her all the time. Because now, if she flies off, she if she flies off at my house, she goes to the park. Mm -hmm. You know, I know where she's going. Um, Why if, does she go to the park? Because that's where we always train. We, I throw her up around trees. I want her to know how to weave in and out of trees. I want her to hear the dogs barking. I want the neighbors. I want all of the distractions and stuff we work with. Just so when it does happen, she's not surprised. Mm -hmm. And now she, you know, she gets tired of flying. She goes up on a roof. She can see me. She looks around and then she flies back to me when she's ready. And, and usually it's only five minutes. Right. So you had the GoPro on today. Mm -hmm. So, first time. First time. So we put the GoPro on on her harness, mm -hmm. and that was the whole idea of keeping that on her was because we wanted to work up to putting a GoPro. Right. I don't think anybody's done that. Right. And so we just decided, hey, that would be really cool. And how did that work out today? It worked out very well. We have some great shots. Um, we do have to work on how to attach it to the harness a little bit better when she was flapping her wings Yeah, the camera, you know wobbled and shook a lot mm -hmm. But when she stopped flapping the video is amazing it's You know when she's soaring and she's coming in, especially when she's coming in for a landing right. It's a whole new perspective of bird flying Indy was your first bird or no? No. Um, we started out with a little conure. Again, that's one of the things that I, I do a lot of research. And I wasn't sure if I was ready for a big bird. The suggestion was, why not try a little bird first? See if, you know, see if it fits. Birds are different than dogs. And so got the conure and she just became part of the family. Um, one of the biggest things that we found out through the whole experience is 
is that we're very close knit. There aren't a lot of outsiders that come in. You're family. We're family. And that was perfect for our birds. Our birds are part of that close knit. They're part of that, you know, when our friends come over, they know our friends. When we, you know, obviously we fly and, you know, Indy has enough confidence in you that she, she'll fly to you. And I'm fine with that. She won't fly to anybody else. I fly her out at, at other mountain ranges and she will, I specifically bought this hat so she could pick me out of a crowd. Mm -hmm. Um, and so that's, and so now we actually have five birds. And so we, what else do you have? We have a cockatiel that flew into our backyard and it was like, this is the place. This is the place. <laughs> you have a mulberry tree. There's water. I'm hearing other birds. <laughs> yep. This is perfect. Uh, we have a severe macaw, which we got from a rescue, which was, she was in a really bad, he was a really bad situation. Um, they really knew nothing about him. They actually thought he was a she, uh, was bounced from a dog rescue to a dog rescue to a dog rescue. And she would yell or he would yell and then say, shut up, yell and then say, you're a bad bird. And then she'd yell and say, stop it. And so it was a really tough situation. And now that bird is, you know, she's part of the family. Mm -hmm. she, she's found her forever home and, and she's, a, she's an awesome bird. He is part of the family. He is part of the family. It's still too hard for me to, to do that sometimes. Um, my daughter went and got an Amazon. Mm -hmm. And Jinx is, you know, amazing. And I think that's five. Five. That's fine. Okay. So, anybody watching this, because this is obviously for educational purposes, um, what couple of things would you suggest, not suggest, do, not do next time, or for uh, any advice for anybody who may be thinking about getting a bird, or maybe already has a bird, might be having problems, or wish you got a bad one. Um, I wish I would have known beforehand that, um, you have to do things on bird time. They'll do it when they're ready. Don't get a bird if you, if you're expecting a bird to talk. Get a bird because you love to spend time with your animal. Mm -hmm. Birds are a lot of time, a lot of time, a lot of cleanup. Um, they like to chew things. Not that the toys are too expensive, but they get to be expensive mm -hmm. over time. Um, if you don't give them enough stimulus, they'll start to act up. That was another reason why we wanted to free fly. Burn that energy off mm -hmm. rather than just being cooped up in a house. And get a bird if you have the time. Um, yeah, huh? We spend a lot of time together. You think you spend more time uh, with her than you did with the dog? I spend much more time with her. Much than more I spend time. Much more time. She demands more time. I was very close to my dog. We, if wherever I went, that dog went. Um, hiking dog, travel dog. We did everything, and that's what she does. But it's the home time that she demands more time. Meaning. Meaning, if I'm sitting on the couch, I'm not going to leave her in her cage all day. Mm -hmm. If you know, no matter how big the cage is, she she needs interaction. She needs that flock content. Mm -hmm. uh, she, if I'm on the couch, she's going to fly to me, and she wants my attention. And we do a lot of this. We do a lot of cuddling. Um, she wants to play games with me. The dog was happy just laying there I could just rub its head she wants if she wants my attention she's gonna grab my hand mm -hmm. my dog may do that but not as much okay yeah it'll be interesting to see if because I think a lot of that right now is she's still such a baby and, and it could be yeah uh, at first but you spent a lot of time with her at the beginning too like you put that time in yes it's almost like she's almost expecting it now 
the other thing that I do with her is I try to mix up the tones. Mm. Because I don't know what life's going to throw mm -hmm. at me. What happens if I have to work through the night? And that's our quality time. Mm -hmm. So I want to. I don't want her to ever get stressed out because everything is, we start at 8 and then this happens at 10 right. and then this happens. I want it to be a little mixed up. Mm -hmm. But she knows that when she has me, everything's fine. Right, right. You know, I spent so much time with her at the bird store that when I brought her home, she only liked me. Yeah. And now she's getting acclimated to the entire yeah, house. Yeah. And now it's getting to be fun. You know, she's running around, you know, flying around the house screaming. And then she'll go upstairs and then she'll fly back down. Because she flew everybody today. I mean, everybody yeah. in her family. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which I knew she wasn't doing before. Yeah. No, it's... Yeah. And now her eyes are starting to light in. Yeah. Thinking about getting another one? Yes, we are. What? Wait a minute. I didn't even... <laughs> Yes, we are. What? We want another. We, when she flies, when we go hike, she flies, but not a lot. But when there's other birds around, oh, she yes. burns that energy. True that. Yeah. So we would like to get another flyer, something that we can go for our hikes and let them fly together, mm -hmm. burn mm -hmm. her energy off. And that was one of the things we were talking about was mm -hmm. when I started her flying, oh, when I didn't fly her enough, she would start getting edgy. She would start getting nippy. She would start tearing things up. So take her out, fly her. And so if I got another bird, she'd fly longer, burn more of that energy off. With my luck, it'll just be more stamina. <laughs> <laughs> now they're out flying for an hour instead of yeah. half an hour. So thank you. You are actually our very first, you're our first. Nice. No, not that. Nice. <laughs> so, and it's been a pleasure uh, for the, all this entire time of meeting you and meeting your family. You've opened your family up to us and, and super appreciate that. You know, this, the store really makes it easy. It really does. Uh, it's a nice family atmosphere. You know, I ask a lot of questions and ev nobody ever said, that's really a dumb question. Everybody. Well, not to your face. But. <laughs> <laughs> but no, but but it was, you know, it was right. insightful. It was, you know, there was just so much to it. The people that I met, not only in the store, but the customers that right. came in, other people that were interested in birds, and and it's changed us a lot. And mm -hmm. so, I, I for the good. Yeah. Yeah. So awesome. No, you were extremely instrumental during that time. But, you were right around all that time where all the babies were coming in and everybody was coming in like weekly, seeing their babies. You guys had like this little crew going on. It was, I know our, cli our clients were coming up to you guys because they thought that you like worked there and asked mm -hmm. questions yeah. and you're like, uh, no, <laughs> it was in a bird store shirt. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> but but they were nice. the same questions I had, mm. you know, so it, it was, it was easy, mm. you know, from there anyway. Right. Well, you've been... Pleasure to get to know. Thank that's you. for sure. Not that we're both from Jersey and we already are connected. But and that, from Red Bank. And from Red Bank, which yeah. really nobody knows where that is. But <laughs> Don't look it up now. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you. Thank really. you. Really, you've been amazing. You. You've been a, a great steward to your bird, your birds. Yeah. And uh, your family's wonderful. And uh, thank you for being here. Thank you. Else you You're do? always one of our first calls when a bird goes missing. You yeah. guys are always there yeah, that's for putting sure. up flyers or say spending days hiking a mountain. <sighs> this side, that side, up, down. We don't need to talk about that right now. <laughs> <laughs> that's another video. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Bye. Bye. Bye.